I firmly believe you can't truly appreciate where you are unless you know where you started. And this is just about where it all started. Hey. Here we have a 1930 Ford Model A. This replaced the Model T, which we all know as the first ever affordable automobile. There were over 4.8 million of these produced and sold within its five-year production run. This was the first Ford to offer a standard set of driver controls with everything in the typical location that we're used to seeing today. It was released at $400 all the way up to $1,400 depending on the body style you went with. In today's money, adjusting for inflation, that's between $6,000 all the way up to $21,000 for a Model A. Despite some stiff competition and the Great Depression, the Model A was a huge success. It was made available in over 35 different body styles, this one being the Tudor sedan. It was the first of their vehicles to slap on the iconic blue oval logo we all know today. The owner of this car, Francis, has had it in his family since the 1960s. He's the dapper young man with the pop collar on the left of this photo. On the right is his father, Frank, who purchased it from a college friend. It was one of many in a barn find. This was originally driven by Francis's brothers and sisters, used as a daily driver throughout their high school careers. This photo shows them packed in the car at their school parking lot. Such brave young kids they were. In the early 80s, the Model A had undergone a top-to-bottom restoration by a family friend, a gentleman by the name of John Reardon in Massachusetts. Because Francis's father didn't really drive, his mother put it on a flatbed to Connecticut, told Francis to apologize to his wife for her, and said it was his problem now. Since then, he's got it in working order and maintains it with the help of his guy, Gary. When I asked who Gary was, Francis just said, it's Gary. Everyone needs a Gary. Now, this is all business on the inside. You have a seat with controls around you. Almost everything in arm's reach is there primarily as a function of the car and not for your pleasure. Amenities include windows that roll down and seats you can sit on. Otherwise, you drive or be driven. Let's call this the infotainment center, which I actually think is a wealth of information for the time, showing you gas level, speed, and amps with a light in the middle. I've heard that Ford ordered parts in wood crates that were then recycled and used in the assembly of the car. It's kind of concerning to be in a car made with wood, but kudos to them for their ingenuity. The controls, although similar to cars of today, had a few additions, so thankfully it came with an instruction book. Located on the steering wheel, you have your spark advance on your left and hand throttle on your right. Foot pedals from left to right are your clutch and brake pedal. The throttle button, we'll call it, with a foot rest to the right of it. The engine start button is above, to the right of the steering column. Ford clearly intended on the passenger being involved as well, with the fuel cutoff being buried under the passenger side dash and the choke just in front. Protruding from the floor of the car are the shifter and handbrake located in the middle. Considering my vague grasp on the controls, and with this being only the second time I've driven this nearly 90-year-old vehicle, Francis will be riding along with me to make sure it all goes smoothly. All right. Jesus. These seats don't move back. Uh, they do. <laughs> But you need a screwdriver and you need to take them apart. <laughs> Anywhere that's, I'm looking for a seatbelt. Yeah. <laughs> seat belt. So how do we... Uh, well, you first you need the key. Key. It's over there. It's starting to rain now. My car's getting wet. Oh, man. <laughs> Don't make me feel guilty, bro. <laughs> Told me it was going to be 45 and sunny. It was a minute ago. All okay. right. No, 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 that's not nope. the first thing you do. First you gotta, thing you do, gas on? Gas on. Okay. So it's got to go down. Down. The spark. Spark down. Down. Call it halfway. Halfway. Yep. Yeah. Want to pull the, the throttle line down. Okay. About halfway. About halfway. You got your starter up there on the. Yep. Top clutch right down. Thing. Nope. You don't. The clutch doesn't matter. There's no button matter. on that, right? And then just press this. Yep. So you're gonna the, choke it a little so bit. So I'm gonna choke it a little bit. Okay. Pull it off, and now you're gonna push the spark back up. Up. Okay. Up. So now. You hear how the engine's actually running pretty high right now. Yeah, so we jump on the gas. Keep going. Almost to the point where you're starving it, and you'll hear it. It's like one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Keep going. You hear it? Okay, so that's... That's, that's actually the idle. That's standard idle right there. That's where you want to be. Now, do you so, want to put the windows up so you're... Oh, we can't blinker. Uh, well, I can't your, inform that's, others of that's, my locations. I got news for you. Most people don't know what it is anyway. <laughs> yeah. So clutch down, reverses up, right? So we're uh, gonna go down to first. Correct. Okay. And then or lower. Or lower, yes. Remember? Low, intermediate, lower. and high. Correct. Okay. So. All right. 
technically we're flying right now. We're, half, <laughs> we're halfway there. Nice little tractor feel, I like this. Well, here's the deal, it's cold right now. In about five minutes it will be... A little more responsive. It, it's gonna be more responsive. All right, this is pretty nice. It still throws me off with the speedometer that just kind of floats. So well, you're all 35 now. Yeah, I mean, it's only, it seems to me I'm either doing 35 or 40 the way it's shaking. It's got a little bit of play to it. Same thing with the gas tank. We're always between a half to three quarters. It, well, it depends on how many bumps you hit. <laughs> is well, that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. It is. So okay. you're actually going the speed limit. That's the part that's really scary. When people realize how fast they're going, they'd be blown away. But in these new cars, you have no idea. Yeah, exactly. That 35 is actually pretty quick. Yeah. Especially um, when you have no surrounding elements to keep you safe. Yeah. I mean, I don't really want to go faster without a seatbelt. Well, you're bouncing around. And, and keep in mind, this is glass. Actually, I heard that this was the first to offer safety glass. It didn't come with it, but it offered it. Yeah. Well, the gas is right here. Yeah, this whole thing's your gas tank. That seems wildly dangerous. Put gas right in front of people's heads. They really didn't think of anything safety when they made these cars. A friend told me that when they first started putting seatbelts in cars, you know, after the whole Ralph Nader thing yep. with the Corvair, he said that when a car came with seatbelts, people would question why. Like, does the manufacturer think the car is unsafe? That how close you are in the car. You have to be comfortable with who you're driving. Yeah, you yeah. gotta really like the person. This is a lot of fun to drive. Now, where do you drive it when you take it out? What's your... I, you know, I like to drive it anywhere from five to 10 miles. I've taken it to town. I do like to get it on a straight strip where you can actually get it going up to that 35, 40 miles an hour. It runs best. It runs best. You, you actually can feel it after about 10 or 15 minutes. It's an active event. You can't, it's not a passive thing. You yeah. have to be involved. You have to be paying attention. You have to be looking at it and say, okay, is this guy gonna jump out in front of me? Or how much time do I have to get through this light? Yeah. So you need I'd to be, be very proactive. I'd be in gear right now if I were you. Okay, yeah, that's God damn it, why were you right? There you go. Oh, sorry guys, we missed the light. <laughs> that, that, that's why I do uh, it here. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. When the kids are all home and the cars are all being used, I'll drive this as a daily driver. Why don't we do this? We'll go up here and you get to drive it on a hill. Oh my God. What happens when I go backwards? It's a pucker. Uh, right here. Right here. Okay. Right here. I'm gonna hold on so I don't fly out the window. Okay. Now yeah. you're gonna try to gun it because that's the hill you're gonna hit. I'm gunning it right now. Get up to third gear as fast as you can. Oh, uh, this seems trying. Keep going. This is a big hill, dude. I know. Not bad. So I, I get my kids and I tell them to lean forward. I say, guys, we're on a hill. You gotta lean. You gotta lean forward so we can get up the hill. And they would all do this. <laughs> but literally, up until like last year, they. Instinctively, when they're in the car, <laughs> they lean forward, and it's hilarious. And I started laughing the last time, and they're like, it doesn't matter, does it? I'm like, not at all. Oh, we're going to go down this hill now. We are. Should I keep it in second? Or? Uh, no, you can put it in third. I'm pumping the brakes right now. I imagine you don't want to kind of hold them, because you probably burn the drums out. Yeah, exactly. So I, I pump them as I'm going down. Yeah. I mean, we're going 25, but you it's feel just, like you're going a lot I faster I feel like I'm going 1,000 miles an hour right now. Okay. I can't believe anybody did this in mass. Yeah. Like everybody had the same handicap, and everybody had the same issue. So you're probably all waiting at a red light <laughs> yeah. for me well, to get in the gear. Think about it. There probably weren't as many red lights. It, it, it's extremely comfortable to drive. I mean, there's no traffic. That's the only reason why I'm probably OK yeah, with it. Yeah, but it's, it's still a workout. Yeah, no, no, totally. Uh, I'm, I'm totally awake. I'm totally alert right now. Well, here's the other thing. You haven't picked up your phone. No, I, I, I mean, I don't normally, but I certainly can't now. I would love to see somebody texting and driving in this Maybe. car. Look at this beautiful day. Yeah. The beautiful day now. I'm telling you, I'm doing the right thing here. I know I am. Okay, watch, you do it. What am I doing wrong? You're bringing it here. It yeah, needs I, to be here. I'm doing that. No, you're not. I'm doing I'm watching I'm going to go over right here. I'm yep. all the way. I'm to the left. I owe you a first gear, sir. <laughs> okay, watch me get in the first. This is going to be amazing. Watch this. This is going to be phenomenal. Get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in. I'm staying in. I made you so proud the first time. The first time you I made you so crushed proud. it. Riding the hell out oh, of it today. Oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here you go. I want to change it. Yeah. There you go. There we go. Okay. You're back. <laughs> it would be great if you stopped hitting the pothole. Do you want to? I'm not, I'm not aiming. You're aiming for the pothole. Okay, I'll go You're around. Like my teenage daughters. I'll go around. 
So now I gotta like steer the thing. It's the one thing I'm trying not to do. I feel like I'm driving a school bus. Is it? That's this. It's this whole, <laughs> this whole giant thing. You're gonna want to slow down a little bit with this turn. I love how you point out to slow down a good 500 feet before a corner. It's like driving an F1 car. You have to throw out everything you've ever learned about driving just to get this thing around a basic corner. A simple corner like that. Yes, exactly. So am I telling you too soon or I think I'm telling you at the right time. I think you're telling me at the perfect time, right? I'm just not I'm not factoring it in because uh, I'm gonna turn, you know, it's a big deal. It just it's funny the amount of stress you have to put on it just to get these wheels to turn. You know, when you look at them, how narrow they are, you're sitting there going, how why is it so hard? You're going 45, you're yeah. almost 45. I mean I hit 50 before, I'm very proud but of did, myself. You feel yourself drift over? Yeah, oh yeah, Isn't I'm, I'm sliding all over the place. I wonder how many feet I legitimately need to stop at 40 miles an hour. Uh, a lot. A lot. Yeah, Do we fine. have brake lights? There's one. There's one. Okay. At least. Oh, man. You were a little nervous there, weren't you? Yeah. It's starting to smell pretty, uh... Yeah, a little ripe. A little ripe in here, yeah. Let's get that window down just a little bit. You ever pulled over from not wearing your seatbelt? Nope. It's, it's enjoyable until someone's on my ass. And I'm like, just look at the car for a second. But they don't. That's Does it look like this thing was made in the last it's, 10 years? It's, that's the part that you just get blown away. Like, seriously? All right, we're shaking and moving now. As long as I don't switch gears, I think we're all right. Oh! Uh, that would have been, that, that been horrible. Yeah, that didn't do anything. No! Stop! <laughs> it's, did you... Did you make it do that noise, or did it do that noise stuck? It's an awooga. Once you get it up to the speed and you're just floating, I mean, it is, and you gotta have that glide speed. It is It is really relaxing. It is really nice. It's a fun and little just drive. getting it there is. can be a little stressful. And as stressful as it is, it's still fun. It's like fun stress. Is there such a thing? Yeah, yeah it is. That's what it is. You're gonna get out of the car and you're gonna be like, whoo, ah, I need a drink. So gentle and up. I, I can feel it vibrating off of the off of the stick. You tell me you can get into reverse right now. I feel like I'm in the bizarro world, man. As you can see, Francis was a good sport, simply laughing at me every time I chunked the gearbox. Driving this Model A was quite the experience. It's hands down the easiest way to gain an appreciation of how far we've come with safety and technology. The auto industry in its infancy was a dangerous one. I'd consider people of that generation fearless, with very few regulations at the time for how cars were built. I think everyone should drive something like this at least once, just to know how good we have it today. Let me finish by saying thank you to Francis for letting me drive this historic Ford. If you've enjoyed, like and subscribe. If not, let me know why in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Believe it or not, this is a light. For what? It's your dashboard light. For, oh my God. I mean, they tried. And that's what I appreciate. It does not. It actually, believe it or not. Does it work? It works. works. <laughs>